So you be lying to yourself if NBA trade deadline 2024 was the most exciting trade deadline of all time. But you also would be lying to yourself if you say nothing important happened at this year's trade deadline. If you are like me and love flexing your NBA knowledge, you should head over to the best place to play fantasy sports. That's Underdog Fantasy. For me, I love the pick'em game. It's super simple to play too. All you gotta do is go to the Underdog Fantasy website or app, pick whether a player will have a higher or lower stat line for that game, get all your picks right, and you can win up to 20 times your money. And when you sign up, if you use my code FERRO, your deposit will get doubled. You can't beat that. Again, head over to today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy's website or app, use my code FERRO, and your first deposit will get doubled. The Philadelphia 76ers kicked off Thursday's deadline activities by trading Marcus Morris, Forkin Korkmaz, and three second round picks. And they're getting Buddy Hield in return to hopefully get a run with Joel Embiid when he returns from injury. How about the Dallas Mavericks going and getting PJ Washington from the Charlotte Hornets in return? Charlotte's getting Grant Williams, Seth Curry, and a first round pick. The Milwaukee Bucks did make a deadline move, but it did not involve Bobby Portis, whose name had been rumored over the last few days. How about Milwaukee getting Patrick Beverly from the Sixers in exchange for Cameron Payne in a second round pick? Kelly Olynyk's name had been in a lot of conversation with contenders over the last few days. He's not going to a contender, but how about Utah sending out Olynyk and O'Shea Abaji? To the Toronto Raptors for Kiera Lewis, Otto Porter, and a 2024 first round pick. Raptors were not done dealing. They sent out Dennis Schroeder and Thaddeus Young to Brooklyn. And in exchange, Toronto's bringing in Spencer Dinwiddie, but it does appear as if though Dinwiddie will be waived. The New York Knickerbockers got active. They first made a trade for Alec Burks with the Detroit Pistons, who will receive Quinn Grimes and two future second round picks. New York and Detroit were not done doing business. How about the Knicks? Also getting Bojan Bogdanovic. Detroit's gonna get Evan Fournier and Malachi Flynn in that deal. And that's pretty much all of trade deadline 2024. I'm missing a couple of smaller trades here and there. Dougie McDermott got moved. Corey Joseph did get shipped out of Golden State. He's going to Indiana, but that's pretty much it. You didn't miss much from some of the contending teams or teams that have been contenders in the past. The Warriors and the Lakers, for the most part, were both very quiet. The Lakers made no moves at the deadline. DeJounte Murray stays in Atlanta. I do believe that's in large part due to his great play over the last month with the Hawks. Also, we had no Bruce Brown trade. Raptors were active, but they did not move Bruce Brown like many people had expected them to do following Bruce's move from the Pacers just a month ago. So that's the pretty much synopsis. If you're asking me what was my favorite move of the day, to me the move that makes the most impact or could potentially make the most impact on this year's NBA champion, I'm going out east. The Milwaukee Bucks desperately needed a shift in culture on the defensive end of the court. It ain't been Doc Rivers just yet. He's one in four so far since he's taken over from Adrian Griffin as Milwaukee Bucks head coach. Patrick Beverly on the court is not going to be the dude that goes out and locks up any point guard any given night. But his mentality, what we've seen of recent, Chicago Bulls last year. I'll give him a little credit for the Sixers this year and some of his other stints in the past. This dude can be a vocal difference maker and more than just what he brings to the table with his hustle and, and stellar play on defense from time to time on the court, he brings it. He challenges guys. He More than him being a player, he's kind of like a player coach. And, you know, him and Dame have had their history in the past. I do like the potential of Pat Bev getting in Dame's face and Pat Bev talking that talk with Dame and challenging Lillard to be a better defender than what he's been thus far. I, I know he's Pat Bev, the pod man as well, but trust and believe 
I want to see Patrick Beverly shift the culture in Milwaukee. A move like that could, in theory, be uh, one that we deem significant come playoff time because the Bucs are awful defensively, possession to possession. Pat Bev now will have something to save. Again, overall, no stars traded at the deadline. But if we're being completely honest, this is what we want if you're really invested in your team. If you think your team's got a chance at winning a championship, you don't want them to feel like they got to move and go get a star at the deadline. You want them to feel good about the product that they brought into the season. That's the reality of the NBA. Ever since Adam Silver implemented that play-in tournament, a lot of teams feel like they got a shot. So you didn't have as many sellers in years past because there's a lot of teams that feel like this could be their year. And if you want me to be really honest with you guys from the amount of basketball that I've watched this year, truth be told, the two top teams out West, in my opinion, and I'm not going based off record, out West is the Denver Nuggets and statistically it's the Los Angeles Clippers at this moment. If we're being honest, the Nuggets have been really good for years now. They just so happened to be healthy last year. What if Jamal Murray goes down? Knock on wood. Michael Porter Jr. goes down. Knock on wood. Jokic has been incredibly healthy thus far in his career. What if he finally has an injury? Right? It could happen. Hopefully it doesn't, but it could happen. That changes everything out west with just one of those pieces going down. The Clippers, we know everything that could go wrong has gone wrong for them come playoff time of recent past. So for that, if you're a Western Conference team, if you got a LeBron James on your squad, a Steph Curry on your squad, these legends that are just capable of taking over a, a series, you're damn right you're not going to be sellers at the deadline. Because you feel as if, though, with the right seeding, if the Oklahoma City Thunder mess around and get the one seed, if the Minnesota Timberwolves mess around and get the two seed, if you're the Lakers and the Warriors, you can find a way just to get these dudes geared up enough and, and over the hump enough to win enough games to get in that play-in tournament. You believe, you if you're the Warriors, you believe you could beat the Lakers in a play-in tournament situation. If you're the Lakers, you already know what you've done to the Warriors in the play-in of recent years and in the playoffs of recent years. You believe you could beat the Warriors in a play-in tournament scenario to get in and then maybe just maybe have a crack at a, a Thunder squad, a T-Wolves squad, and you're banking on maybe the Nuggets not being at full strip or the Clippers not being at full strip. That's literally what happened to the Lakers last year, and they got to the conference finals. Out East, the Chicago Bulls made no moves. That was my one shocker out East. The Chicago Bulls have not made a move since 2021. I don't know what's going on in that building, but all we hear are the Chicago Bulls players pretty much telling you the end is near. And something weird happened, and I didn't see a lot of people talk about it. Zach Levine. It's done for the year. Zach Levine and his team came out a week ago and let it be known that he's going to opt for season ending surgery. And I do not think that's an accident. According to KCJ Hoops, who does a fantastic job, we heard rumblings about the Detroit Pistons potentially putting a package together to go get Zach at this year's deadline. Now, what do we know about the deadline? The Detroit Pistons were very active. You're telling me that maybe a couple of those pieces that were sent out to New York couldn't have been potentially a part of a Zach Levine trade? Knowing what we know now, maybe that Detroit Zach Levine trade was closer to getting done than many of us knew. With that being said, if that was the case, Zach was like, hell no, I ain't going to Detroit. If y'all want me, go get me this summer after surgery. I can't pass a physical. I'm done for the year. So the Bulls make no moves. That's my biggest shocker. I think a lot of us coming into the year could have easily seen the Bulls being one of the most important teams at the deadline. I think I said that multiple times over. And if you would have told me the Bulls wouldn't have been great, wouldn't have gotten off to a great start looking at where they're at in the East right now, I would have said, okay, I'm sure they're going to be one of the trade deadline sellers. That ended up not being the case at this deadline. They did nothing. You look around the Boston Celtics, I don't think they had to do much. They're the one team that I feel as if, though, they deserve to get a full season of what they did this offseason. They were so damn great this offseason, I'm fine with them getting a full year run. Uh, go back out west, the Memphis Grizzlies have entirely blew the thing up. I'm from Memphis, ladies and gentlemen. I watch a lot of Grizzlies games because that's my hometown. 
I don't even know who the hell's on the Memphis Grizzlies roster right now. That is wild. I thought they were going to move Marcus Smart. They did not. Those are some of the things that come to mind to me. The Phoenix Suns did make a small move. I did not mention them to start the video off. They did go out and get Royce O'Neal. That's something. Dorian Finney-Smith did not get moved at the deadline. His name was out there. Ben Simmons is still a Brooklyn net. That's interesting to me. The Cam Thomas one. I'm just running through the league now. Cam Thomas makes it through another trade deadline. Interesting. Mikael Bridges. He's one of the most sought after guys. When you talk about guys that teams would love to get their hands on via a trade, he's right there on the cusp of stardom and superstardom. Like he's right in between there. You could get a, if you could get a guy like that via trade and not mortgage your franchise. A lot of teams out there are licking their chops at that. Apparently, the asking price was still too high, even though Bridges is not that superstar yet that we believe he could potentially be in the next couple years. So that's my thoughts on NBA trade deadline 2024. If you say a lot happened, you're lying. If you say nothing happened, you're lying. Those are my thoughts. Please let me know what was the most intriguing, most important, impactful move of the day. Big changes coming to the platform really, really soon on how I do highlights. It's been a big talking point between me and my internal team. And we're going to change some things up really, really soon. And hopefully we get more engaging content with you guys. Because it's, it's, it's about what y'all want to watch. It's about what y'all want to see. And I don't feel as if though I've done a good job of that of recent. So that's the focal point going forward. I thank y'all so much who've been rocking with me. It's the time, love, and support that I will never take for granted. Let me know your thoughts on NBA trade deadline 2020. Folk, rest in peace to the late great Mamba. I'm out. I want to salute you, homie, you know, for, for building your own thing and doing your own thing. Why build theirs? when I believe I can build my own. You've already done it, or I wouldn't be here. I'm already the only elite sports and music journalist in the game today. My goal is simple, to be the best there's ever been. So, please don't go. Make sure you subscribe and follow the journey. It truly means everything to me. I tell stories, I talk music, I cover sports, I am culture, I am Pharaoh.